What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Radical Red and today's challenge should be can I beat Pokemon Radical Red using a random, not model type, a random model region. So we're going back on the wheel. I'm in love with this wheel for some reason. But the random wheel today we're going to spin it and we actually got Sinnoh, my favorite region of all times. Yeah, honestly, I was going to reroll it because it feels like it's raid because it's my favorite region. I'm most comfortable with Sinnoh Pokemon because I played it so many times. Uh, so I was going to re-roll it be like, oh, it's not rigged, but it was actually Sinnoh for the first region. So we're going to try to beat Radical Red 4.0 Hardcore Mode using only a Mono region. So I've done Mono region before on Radical Red, but I've never done a Hardcore Mode because it seemed like a daunting task. And I wasn't really good at the game, apparently. And honestly, I had a lot of ways to improve uh, to get better at the game. And honestly, through the Mono types, I think I'm really comfortable with Hardcore Modes. So we're going to try to beat Radical Red 4.0 with only Sinnoh Pokemon. And you guys know how Radical Red goes by now. There's also a fun rule included with this. Each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thanks so much for leaving a nickname in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a future Pokemon, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while you're down there, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. I think we're close to 50k. I can't really remember. I'm going to be honest. I think we're like 4,000 off of 50k. So we're pretty close. So anyways, to begin off, I want to choose. I, well, obviously, we're going to have to choose. We're going to choose Chimchar to just immediately evolve it into a Monferno because it's pretty free. And also go out into the wild and catch some Sinnoh Pokemon. There's a lot of Sinnoh Pokemon for us to catch. So I'm not too worried about it. We get ourselves a Shinx. We get ourselves, you know, a Bidoof for some reason. But I feel like I could make Bidoof uh, pretty good. Uh, there's also uh, Snover and all the other Pokemon in here. Eventually, we got a team set up so we can go out into the forest, clear through Viridian Forest, and clear through this trainer to unlock uh, infinite repels and infinite sprints. Pretty useful options for us. We also cleared through the Bug Trainer in here, which is also a little mini boss, which is pretty nice for us. And from there, we can head into Pewter City and then start egg merchant hunting. And there's a lot of different Pokemon that we can give us in the Wonder Egg. And apparently, we don't get a bunch of Sinnoh Pokemon at all. Eventually, though, we landed on a Piplup, which I'll just take because I'm spending so much time with this. I was hoping to get a Gilbo, but you know, Piplup is good enough anyway. So from there, we can face off against Faulkner to unlock the first gym, which isn't too difficult. Uh, as you can see, B-Barrel is actually pretty strong, a fully evolved Pokemon. Has pretty good stats. As from there, we can face off against Brock next. Brock's gonna be the first gym leader in the game. We're gonna start the battle off against him using my Prim Club. Now, this was just a ruse so I could bait in his little leap as I go out to my Monferno. But from there, I'm gonna mock punch, but I catch the Lunatone, so I have to go back out into uh, my Luxio. Luxio is able to get a bite off, but it's gonna switch into his Hippotas. I gotta go out to my Prim Club to bait into the leap, and it's a whole cycle. Eventually, I'm able to catch the leap and just mock punch it to death, so that's really nice for us as we're able to clear through the leap. From there, his Cacnea is going to come out, but I'm able to get a Flame Wheel off and a Mock Punch. So I end up knocking out his Cacnea and getting a Mock Punch off against his Arkin. So from there, I'm going to switch out to my B-Barrel and catch the Vroom. There's a lot of switching. I hate this game because there's so many switching. It's just like Smogon. From there, I go out to my Star Area to sack it against the Vroom to get some chip damage. He then goes out to his Lunatone, which I go out into my B-Barrel. Eventually, I can start sweeping things down. Aqua Jet to knock out the Lunatone. Aqua Jet to knock out the Vroom as well. And then from there, I could two-shot into the Hippotas as we're able to knock him out and knock my B-Barrel out. As his final Pokemon will be an Arkin, which I go out into my Prim Plub to knock out. So we're able to clear through Brock and get our first gym badge in the game. From there, I can move on and face off against this trainer with a Whimsicott and Mawal, which isn't too difficult. Our team is pretty solid. A lot of different typings here. There's something I realized. There's, there's not a lot of good overall Pokemon in Sinnoh. There's a lot of great Pokemon, but there's like very average or below. You have to be good or bad as a Sinnoh Pokemon. There's no in-between. Like, there's no like, mm, is mid, you know? I guess B-Barrel and also Pachirisu could be mid, uh, but overall, they have to be really good or really bad. There's no in-between for Sinnoh Pokemon. Uh, from there, we're going to actually make our way into Mount Moon and then just clear through Mount Moon and the Scientist in here and, and face off against Archer. Archer is a pretty easy fight, as you can see. We make our way into Cerulean City and also we can actually evolve another Pokemon. So we can evolve multiple Pokemon. We're going to evolve myself a Riolu into Lucario and also my Baneri into a Lopunny, which are pretty good Pokemon. I guess Lopunny could fall into the mid range because uh, you'll see why. <laughs> Lopunny is not too useful for me as I don't use the Mega Stone for it. But from there, we're going to move on and face off against Misty next. Misty's the second gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my Luxio. Luxio is able to get a spark off against the Polytoad and paralyze it. From there, I'm going to predict the Toxicroak because I, you know, reset a few times. I get the Toxicroak out and I'm able to do Wing Beat with my Staravia to knock him out. I get poisoned in the process, but that should be fine as I get a quick attack off against the Starmie. I go out to my Snover next, which actually catches the Man Time. Which I didn't want to do, so I gotta switch out into my Pachirisu. I do get a Nuzzle off against him and then Light Screen in front of him. 
and eventually spark him down for a little bit of damage as misty's gonna switch out to her starmie which i get a paralyze on a spark so actually works out pretty well for us as from there she's gonna knock me out but her star means at one hp basically so i got to my lucario i'm gonna rock tomb into the star me and then rock tomb into the ludicolo i'm just gonna let him knock me out as i go out to my skunk tank skunk tank is able to go for a poison tail to knock out the ludicolo from there she's gonna switch out to her clock star which i go for a knockoff it's gonna knock me out but i go out to my snowbird next which will sleep power into him and then from there i could giga drain into the clock star but she's gonna switch out to her mantine so i got to my luxio and luxio gets beat up by the mantine so that's really unfortunate so i gotta go out to my snowbird to knock him out with an ice shard knock out the polyto with a giga drain and also chip down the clock star which works pretty well for us as i'm able to eventually knock him out with an uh, ice shard as we beat down misty and yeah clutched up with snow clutch snow got like three kills at the end so from there we can make our way into the nugget bridge and clear through that and then head into the ssn where we're gonna face off where we're gonna face off against this water trainer and also our rival brendan from there we can move on and face off against lieutenant search next lieutenant search is going to be the third gym leader in the game we're going to start the battle off against him using my inferno against his rotom frost we're able to go for a close combat to knock out his rotom frost which is pretty nice but he switches out to his raichu so i'm gonna go out to my luxury because just to avoid i mean he takes any move pretty easily so i can go for a bite against the right shoe he's gonna knock me out unfortunately but i go out to my inferno to mock punch into him outspeed him and his next bone will be an electrode i assume it's gonna go for an explosion so i go out to my lucario just to tank the hit and from there i force out the palna he's gonna knock me out with a mock punch easily as from there i go out to my infernape infernape is able to get a close combat off but unfortunately i'm gonna go down to a plasma fist from there i still got my low bunny which will fake out and mock punch to knock out the palna not gonna do anything against the amphros i went for return as it goes for focus blast luckily it misses so i get two returns off against him but he's gonna knock me out as i go out to my skunk tank to knock him out with a poison jab two poison jabs actually and his final opponent will be a hitmonlee which knocks out my skunk tank but I do have my Star Raptor in the back with Intimidate and also do Wing Bait to knock him out. So we're able to beat down Lieutenant Surge and clear through the third gym. So from there we can make our way into the Rock Tunnel which isn't too difficult. Both these uh, mini boss trainers at the end of the route. So we're able to clear through pretty well. And then from there we make our way into Celadon City to evolve a bunch of Pokemon that we really want on our team. As you can see there's not a lot of mixture of Pokemon. Uh, from there we can move on and face off against the next gym leader we're gonna face off against erica erica's giving me the grass type gym leader and she's gonna start the battle off against us using a cradley i go for my togekiss as the start lead so i'm able to air slash into him hoping for flinches but it's gonna get a stealth rocks off against us anyway so i just let it slide i'm gonna force out the cradley into the toxic tree which i go out into my mammoth swine which will tank any hits and i can go for bodos but she decides to switch out to her kartana which i go out into my togekiss for some reason so i'm just sacking togekiss at this point so i'm gonna send him my skunk tank skin matchup against the kartana i'm just gonna try to chip it down as it's gonna knock me out with a cut but it's at one hp so i got to my inferno to knock him out with a mock punch as from there her next bone will be a slow bro a galarian slow bro is pretty tanky so i got into my mammoth swine to ice fang it it freezes it but it has flamethrower so i got to my galade galade is able to go for night slashes to two shot it into him and then from there her next bone will be a mega septile which unfortunately goes for sword sense but i do chip him down pretty low as he goes for drago bro my galate goes down but it goes down to low hp which my star raptor can't handle so i can go for a quick attack with my star raptor to knock him out as from there her next poem will be a hot lucha i'm able to go for a dual wing beat and then unfortunately i gotta sack my star raptor against the hot lucha as from there i got to my mammoth swine to knock out the hot lucha and also the creatively pretty easily so we end up beating down erica and from there we can move on into the game corner to get some new pokemon so we can get rotom and also gibble on the same team so that's pretty nice to have. So we're going to use those a lot of times in the future. From there, we're going to move on and face off against Giovanni in the basement of the game corner, which worked out pretty well for us. I'm not sure how Magazone clutched up against the ground type, but you know what? It worked out. As from there, we're going to move on into uh, the Lavender Tower, get ourselves the Poke Flute, and also face off against our rival in the Self Co., which isn't too difficult. We're going to clear through. Mammoth Swine clutched up for us at the end and also face off against Ariana and Archer. This double battle fight isn't too difficult. And also, Giovanni wasn't too difficult. So, you know what? We cleared through pretty easily. Again, Magazone clutched up against a ground type. Not too sure why. Not too sure how. Uh, from there, we can move on into the dojo and face off against Chuck. We're going to get ourselves the Focus Sash, and then from there, we can move on and face off against Sabrina. Sabrina's going to be a double battle fight with infinite Misty Terrain and also infinite Trick Room. So we're going to be very careful when facing her. We're going to use our Mega Galay we got from Chuck. 
on my Gallade, and also we're going to face off against Sabrina. We're going to start the battle off against Sabrina using my Luxury and <laughs> Float So. So we're going to try to target down the camera up, as from there she can obviously go for a Misty Explosion. So I'm going to switch out my Luxury for something later on. So I switch out, sack my unfortunate Skunk Tank to this, so everything goes down. As from there I got to my Luxray and Gallade. As her next poem will be Jellicent and Glacier. I'm going to go for a Suck Punch against the Jellicent and close combat into the Glacier. I'm able to knock out the Glacier as the Jellicent does no damage with the Water Spell. As eventually I'm able to knock him out with a Suck Punch. Her next poem will be an Iron Hands which I chip down nicely. Unfortunately it doesn't work too well for us. As I go out to my Infernape, I Fire Punch into the Magirna. Both of them still stays alive so as I go out to my Rhyperior. I'm going to go for an Earthquake, and unfortunately, I knock out my own Pokemon, which I'm pretty sure would went down anyways. I also knock out the Magirna, but the Iron Hands is still alive. It's going to go for Drain Punch. Luckily enough, Rhyperior survives. I'm able to go for an Earthquake and knock him out. So we're able to beat down Sabrina with a little bit of HP, like a, the very minimum amount of HP we're able to survive with. Uh, from there, we're going to make our way down the Cycling Road, which isn't too difficult. We're going to make our way into Future City, and also we're going to face off against a rival blocking off the Safari Zone from us, which... Again, wasn't too difficult at all. We're also going to go back and face off against the first three gym leaders in the game. Against Brock is probably the hardest one, so I was really, really happy uh, that we got this clutch off against him. <laughs> this, this Iron Thread stays asleep, and it just helped us the entire way through. So we're here to beat down Brock. From there, we can move on and face off against Misty. Misty's a little easier. Not the easiest one, because actually, uh, once we beat Misty, we go to the easiest one, which is going to be Lieutenant Surge. And Surge, you know, we just have the right Pokemon to deal with him. as we really beat him down, and Luxury clutched up with Sucker Punches. So, from there, we're able to unlock uh, Future City's Gym, and we can face off against Koga when we want. We can make our little adjustments. We can get ourselves a Gliscor, uh, Drapion, all that great stuff. And from there, we're going to move on and face off against Koga. We're going to start the battle off against Koga. Well, our first attempt didn't go too well. We lost, unfortunately. But we restart. We're going to make sure we restart until the Tapu Lele misses a Focus Blast. I'm able to land a Stone Edge and knock out the Lele. As from there, his next poem will be a Crocodile. I go out to my Glide Score, predicting a ground move. And so it works out pretty well for us. I can go for a counter against him and then counter to knock out the Crocodile. His next poem will be a Toxic Tree, which I just take the Boomers and sack my Glide Score. Uh, from there, I go out to my low bunny to mirror code into him and survive, knock out the low bunny, and also sack my low bunny to the Needle King. Go out into my Licky Licky against him, and I'm able to explosion into the Needle King, which I'm able to do pretty well. As from there, I'm going to go out into my Rhyperior, and it actually works out as he goes out to his Hoopa. I know he wants to go for an expanding force, so I go out into uh, my Drapion, and it works out as, as I'm able to go for a Bug Bite against him. It is four times weak. I also dodge a Focus Blast, which is really hype, uh, but it still knocks him out. Uh, from there, his next Pokemon and his final Pokemon will be a Shiyu. I do some chip damage with Wicked Blow, but that should be it as I go out to my Rhyperior to Stone Edge, actually Rock Record, to knock out the Shiyu as we beat down Koga pretty easily. So from there, we're going to move on and face off against Price next. Price is a pretty easy fight as we're ready to beat him down, get the choice card for ourselves, and also face off against May in front of Cinnabar Island, which, you know, pretty easy. From there, we're going to make our way into Cinnabar Island's gym where we clear through all the trainers in here, which is pretty nicely. And from there, we can face off against Blaine himself. We're going to start the battle off against Blaine using my Obama Snow against the Fire Gym Leader. Whatever. Uh, against the Sandy Shock, my Obama Snow works out pretty well for us. Is that <laughs> everything else doesn't work out. I'm going to take a Thunderbolt off against the Sandy Shock. As I'm able to Mountain Gale into him and then Ice Shard to knock him out. Fully expecting he went out to his ho to uh, try to decimate me with a Z move. So you know what? He's taking it a bit too far. But actually, he threw with that. That means I don't have to worry about the Z move. I go out to my Garchomp to rock to him into the Ho-Oh, which works out pretty well for us. Activate his Phoenix Form and then force him out into his Great Tusk. As from there, I'm going to switch out to my Furnape against the Great Tusk. Pyro Ball into him actually burns him, so... Oh, I, I thought I was going to survive the close combat. Does not survive the close combat. As I go out to my Togekiss to knock out the Great Tusk. His next one will be a Venusaur, which I thought I was going to outspeed for some reason. So I go out for an Air Slash. Did not work out. So I go out into my Luxray. Luxray is able to take a Sludge Bomb and then Sucker Punch to knock out the Venusaur. And also get a Sucker Punch off against the Walking Wake. As I go out into my Togekiss once again. Togekiss is able to go for an Air Slash against the Walking Wake and flinch him down multiple times. Eventually knocking him out. And then from there, his next one will be a Ho-Oh. Of course, I got to flinch off against the ho -Oh and then eventually knock him out. As his final poem will be a Charizard X, which I air slash into him, but uh, he doesn't flinch. He goes for Dragonus and then Flare Blitz to kill me, so that's a pretty dangerous Charizard. Lucky enough, uh, it didn't matter to us as I go out to my Glide Score. Any move he does can knock himself out, so it works out for us. From there, we can move on into Cerulean Cave, where we can face off against Archer and Ariana. Things are pretty easy for us. I mean, overall, we clear through Archer and Ariana pretty easily as uh, my Togekiss gets a bunch of flinches and 
we have a Mega Lucario, so we shouldn't be worried at all. From there, we can move on and face off against Giovanni himself. And if Lance's AI could be a little bit better and just target the Mega Mewtwo, this would have been way faster. I spent such a long time with this fight and the next couple fights coming up. But honestly, this run could have been really fast. It could have been sub four hours, honestly. But uh, of course, things didn't want to work that way. But anyways, from there, we beat down Giovanni and we're going to move on and face off against the 8th gym leader in the game we're face off against Claire. We're set to battle off against Claire using my Lucario against her Shuckle. I didn't really care about sticky webs as I'm going to go for meter mash, get attack boost, and then that means I'm pretty much able to kill anything else. I survive a flamethrower against the Eternatus, uh, meter mash, and then bullet punch to knock out the Eternatus. As her next potent will be a Roaring Moon. It's going to knock me out, but I get a nice big damage off with a uh, bullet punch. As I go out into my Gliscor next, Gliscor is able to counter and knock out the Roaring Moon as I go for a U turn against her Ultra Necrozma. Go out to my Luxury, and Luxuries can suck punch and knock out the Ultra Necrozma. Necrozma. As her next poem after that will be a Duraludon, which I suck punch a few times into. Uh, but from there, I go out to my Infernape to mock punch twice to knock him out. As her next poem and final poem will be a Magirna. It's gonna knock me out, but I do have a nice Magnezone in the back and also Guard Chomp to knock him out. Which honestly, thinking back, I might have thrown this fight. But luckily, it didn't matter at all. It's really beat down Claire, and then from there we can move on. Face off against a rival in Route 22, which isn't too difficult, and then go out and face off against Brandon in Route 23. Uh, and yeah, pretty simple overall. From there, we're gonna move on into the Pokemon League, clear through this trainer, and then find out that Florilei is using her water team today. So that's uh, it's always fun. We're gonna firstly prep a little bit by getting ourselves some choice cards, which is pretty nice. And then from there, we can move on into the Leaf Four themselves, and then we're gonna face off against Florilei. This fight took 20 minutes of my time for some reason. I don't know why it's taking so long, but eventually we got it down. So we're gonna start the battle off against Florilei's water team against her Iron Bundle and Ludicolo with my Magnezone and also Rotom Wash. I'm able to go for a discharge with my Rowan Wash as she, can, as she can double attack into my Magnezone to knock me out. As I'm able to get a Paralyze off against both the Ludicolo and Iron Bundle in a sacrifice for my Magnezone's life. I didn't switch on my Rotom into my Lucario as I go for an Air Slash to knock out the Ludicolo. And lucky enough, Iron Bundle didn't do anything. As from there, we're going to double attack into the Palkia, assuming the Iron Bundle is going to go for Protect. It worked out really well for us as we're able to knock out the Palkia. Her next opponent after that will be a Swamper. As I go for a high jump kick with my Lucario and then switch out. Oh, I didn't switch out actually. I knock out the Iron Bundle first and then on the following turn, I switched out. Uh, with the Genesect and a Swamper looking at me. I'm actually going to save my Lucario and then sacrifice my Togekiss. Which, you know what? Maybe was the play. I don't know. I go out to my Run Wash and then try to knock out a Swamper for us. As from there, I go for a Scald with my Run Wash. Her last two Pokemon will be a Dragonite and Genesect as I still have three Pokemon in the back. And lucky for us, uh, the Dragonite is unable to knock out my Run Wash as we knock out her Genesect. And from there, I can just double attack into the Dragonite and eventually knock him out. As from there, we're able to beat down Lorelei. That battle wasn't too hard at all. I'm not sure why I struggled so much, but... Once we beat Lorelai, we can move on and face off against Bruno. Bruno's going to be the second Elite Four member in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Togekiss. Togekiss is able to go for an Air Slash and actually flinch down the Urshifu. I believe... No, I just take a Poison Jab and knock out the Urshifu. As his next opponent will be a Zacian. I go out into my Skunk Tank just to sack. I then go out to on my Gliscor, which can counter into him, but he's going to switch out into his Iron Valiant. I don't know what I'm doing here. I go for Bodos and I switch out to my Magnet Zone. And from there, I can Mirror Code into him. But honestly, Flash Cannon probably could have killed anyways. Mirror Code to knock him out. As from there, his next one will be a Zacian. I sacrifice my Magnet Zone and I go out to my Focus Sash Gliscor. Trying to go for a counter against him. But he's going to switch out to his Halucha. Which I'm like, oh, this is pretty bad for us. So I'm going to counter anyways because Halucha got too many boosts up. And from there, he's going to switch out to his Necrozma. I'm going to Bodos before him first. And then he's going to knock me out, which is really good. As I go out to my Mega Lucario. to so high jump kick and knock out the Necrozma for us. And from there, he's going to switch out to Zacian. I'm like, this thing is going to go for close combat. Let me actually bait it in. I go out to my Togekiss, which is four times resistant. Works out pretty well for us as I got a lower special defense. And then from there, I can sacrifice my Lucario, actually, to get another defense drop and go out to my Rotom. Rotom can take one close combat, which actually works out for us. And then at that point, the special defense drops so far that I could scald into him and knock him out. As from there, his next Pokemon and final Pokemon will be a Mega Metachamp. He's going to knock on my Rotom with Fake Out, but I do have Togekiss in the back with a Choice Scarf. And I'm able to go for a Choice Scarf Air Slash. But it doesn't flinch. He actually just doesn't kill me with close combat. So I'm here to outspeed and knock out his Metachamp. So we're here to beat down Bruno just because he's garbage. From there, we can move on and face off against Agatha next. Agatha is a pretty easy fight. All we gotta do is flinch down the Crocodile to deny rocks, and we should be good. As from there, once we beat Crocodile, her next one will be a Calyrex, which I go out to my Magnezone. It has Sturdy and Miracle, so why not? 
So I eventually knock out the Calyrex, which is pretty free. Your next opponent after will be a Mewtwo X. Go out to my Gliscor to get two Bodos off against him and then sacrifice my Magazine. Not too sure with the significant of getting two Bodos there. I think one should have been fine, but from there, sacrifice my Magazine to the Mewtwo as I go out to my Togekiss, assuming he's gonna come out into the Velto, which actually doesn't as I go out to my Skunk Tank. But you know what? Victini's still good enough as I'm getting Explosion. Make sure it doesn't Z celebrate, so it works out for us. As from there, I'm gonna go out to my Rotom against her Flutter Main. I get Discharge Paralyzed off against her, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good for us as eventually I mean ship him down to low HP and go out into uh, my Lucario. Lucario is able to go for a Meter Mash and knock out the Flutter Main. Force out the Yuvalto, and then from there, I made a high jump kick and almost knock him out with one high jump kick. As from there, I made a rock stream and knock out the Yuvalto. As his final opponent will be a Mewtwo X. He's gonna knock me out, but I do have a choke kiss in the back to survive any move. Uh, so I'm able to air slash and knock out the Mewtwo as we're to beat down Agatha. From there, we're gonna move on and face off against Lance next. Lance is a pretty easy fight. We gotta start the battle off against him, meter mashing into him. Get his attack boost, which is pretty broken. So from there, I can meter mash once again to knock out the Glamora. His next one will be an Arceus Fairy, which I take a flamethrower pretty well and then meter mash to knock him out. From there, his next one will be a Dragonite, which I go for a Bullet Punch, which, you know, simple. As from there, I'm gonna go out to my Skunk Tank. Didn't wanna explode, because I knew he had a Dialga in the back. I'll go out to my Magnet Zone to uh, get Roar Time into um, my Togekiss. Togekiss is able to go for a Moonblast off against the Dialga to lower his special defense and get him down to low HP, actually. So it works out for us. As from there, once I sacrifice my Togekiss, I go out into uh, my Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank is able to go for a knockoff and catch the Melmetal, which go out to my Rotom Wash next, which will eventually knock him out with two Skulls. Three Skulls, actually. And then from there, his next one will be a Mega Race. You know what? Sacrifice my Rotom Wash. Go out and seal my Gliscor to counter into him. Works out pretty well for us. As we're ready to survive a counter and then knock out the Mega Ray. His next one will be a Dragonite, which is going to knock out my Gliscor. But I do have my Skunk Tank in the back to Explosion into the Dragonite. Which leaves him at 1 HP, which is kind of annoying, but you know what? I can outspeed him, discharge to knock him out as his next Pokemon and final Pokemon will be the Primal Dialga he had in the back. This discharge right here is so big. Discharge, paralyze, full para. And then from there, I'm able to discharge again to knock out the Dialga and eventually knock out Lance. That is a very good combination of moves right there. From there, we beat down Lance and we move on and face off against our rival in the game. We face off against Blue, we're going to start the battle off against him using my Mega Lucario. Mega Lucario is pretty broken. High jump kick, adaptability, one shots the Kyogre, yeah. Full Primal Kyogre goes down in one shot. From there, his next one will be an Eternatus, which I go out into uh, my Skunk Tank, which I go out into my Magazine, which will take a Thunder into a Drake Brush to allow me for discharging. What, why didn't I go for Mirror Coat? Anyways, I go out to my Skunk Tank to Explosion and knock out the G Max Eternatus. From there, I go out into my Lucario to high jump kick into him and knock him out. From there, his next poem will be an Ultra and a Cross Mine. After that, I go for a Bullet Punch, which sacrifices my Mega Lucario. Go out to my Gliscor to counter into him. So I guess that's the idea. But from there, he switched out to his Walking Wake, which I sacrifice my Gliscor. Go out into my Togekiss, which will flinch down twice into the Walking Wake and then knock him out for sure. And his final poem will be a Swamper, a Mega Swamper, which actually does uh, speed me and Stone Edge me twice and then knock me out. So from there, I go out to my Rotom as my final Pokemon. All I gotta do, land a Scald. Don't die to the Stone Edge, which Stone Edge doesn't do enough damage to me, and I scold into him, burns him, and I'm able to knock him out in the following turn. So we ended up beating down Blue pretty easily overall. Honestly, the Sinnoh team, uh, I was more disappointed in the team construction for the Elite Four uh, than anything else, but honestly, everything else was pretty fun. Uh, I, do, I do like how I just zoomed through the entire game up until the Elite Four. The Elite Four took about an hour, which is unfortunate, but uh, in a 4 hour and 30 minute run, shouldn't be too difficult, right? You know, it shouldn't, it isn't the worst thing. Anyways, that would be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, my name has been Alpha, and I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'm out. Peace.